Welcome to this talk on random walks in new Romanian spaces uh, prepared by me, Dr. Phil Nguyen, and Dr. Eldet Sberi from the Faculty of Fine Arts uh, at Concordia University in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So random walks have been popularized uh, in music since uh, their inception by Yanis Zanakis, for example. Uh, we can say that a trained ear can distinguish between a uniform distribution, a Gaussian, a Poisson distribution, Brownian motion, FVM processes, random rotations, etc. In this uh, talk, we propose a new form of random walk steered by a transformation matrix representing a neo Riemannian space that can be learned for offline or real time from a corpus. So notes have become hard to choose. Uh, Tristan Muraille in Spectra and Sprites, uh, a famous paper, uh, is known to have said that uh, notes have effectively become very hard to choose for contemporary composers. Uh, by the time he made the statement, choosing notes had evolved from highly educated choices or mathematically oriented processes to total random choices. So it is well known that classical music chooses from the diatonic scale, post-romantic or Hollywoodian music from the chromatic scale in a somewhat neo romanian fashion. Uh, atonal and serial music is chromatic in the sense of a 12-note scale, but, the but by now changes to the transformation rules uh, occurred, uh, such as the introduction of reversals, inversions, non-repetition, etc. By the time serial music had stormed the cultural elites in America and Europe, composers such as John Cage were experimenting with chance music and indeterminacy, while others such as Yanis Yan Zanakis were building ways to generate arbitrary scales. Uh, he actually called them uh, sieves. So Levy and his thesis distinguishes between purely algorithmic systems and composition systems from uh, generative systems which display a degree of learning and control. So a system that learns can be trained on a corpus of work and extract a database of patterns whereas a system that displays control can function autonomously with minimal intervention. So generative systems have immediately made use of a bunch of heuristics that come from computer science such as Cellular automata, artificial life concepts, swarm intelligence, or genetic algorithms. Uh, genetic generative systems have also been exploited in uh, performance and improvisation to effectively serve as real-time accompaniment systems. So you have the, the Voyager system by Danberg and a bunch of other systems uh, by Lewis, Tom, Young, Patchett, Carso, Mika. Uh, so generative systems in the literature uh, also there's a bunch of generative systems in the literature that make use of the Oracle factor algorithm uh, they were mostly based out of IFCAM and uh, they spawn a bunch of uh, systems that are available in the max environment such as OMAX DC2 or SOMAX so uh, on one hand we have generative systems and on the other we have new Romanian spaces. Uh, so there was a revival in the 90s and 2000s of uh, harmonic transformational theories such as those of Hugo Riemann, uh, Weizmann or uh, in the 19th century. Uh, they were popularized by scholars such as David Levin, Fred Lerdahl, Richard Kahn, Dimitri Timashko, among others. Uh, so a basic pattern in those re new Romanian theories is that we embed harmony in a space equipped with a distance measure. So it's a very simple pattern, but it, it, it explains a lot. So here we have uh, in A on your left, uh, a new Romanian tonettes. So basically the transition graphs of uh, major and minor triads. Uh, in the center, we have the same thing, but for the Weizmann space, so basically major minor triads and also augmented and diminished triads. 
so on your right top right is uh, a random walk uh, each axis is a note in the triad so you see that the random walk actually clusters and then bifurcates towards another cluster and at the bottom you have an open ma uh, music patches uh, to generate new Riemannian and uh, Weizmann random walks. So chordal distance measures. Uh, new Riemannian theories are based on the embedding of a set of possibly infinite chords into a distance space, which can be Riemannian, Riemann's original triangular matrix, a lattice of my major and minor triads, Weizmann lattices, lattices Lerdal or two distance spaces, Timoshko manifolds of all possible four chords, uh, or some arbitrary Euclidean space or weighted graph, for instance, uh, equipped with a shortest path distance, for example. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, distance measures, chordal distance measures, which are listed in a survey paper by Rocher. Uh, so we have the Coster distance, the intervalic content, and the Estrada distance, the true distance, which is also called the spiral array distance, Lerdl's tonal pitch pace, and the Pema distance. So here we have uh, distance measure, uh, distance uh, matrices uh, computed uh, on, uh, I think it's uh, uh, on, on a piece by Rachmaninoff uh, using different distance measures. And the graph is actually a, a, a nearest neighbor graph, which was generated from the distance ma matrix. So on A, you have the true distance, so the spiral array distance, the chroma distance in B, coster distance in C, and the estrada distance in D. So you see that depending on the distance measure you use, things uh, are pretty different. So the algorithm, the uh, the the random walk algorithm. So it's based on a decay function, which is called delta t here, which is always be equal between uh, to something between zero and one. When it's one, it's actually it means that it's uh, uh, nothing is happening, and it's, it's it's a distance matrix basically. So so the the sh smaller the number, the closer the 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 chords. Uh, so in the algorithm here, in algorithm one, we actually generate the distance matrix, the transformation matrix. On line 12 of algorithm one, you see that there's two delta functions, so two, two decay functions. Uh, one for time, basically when the chords are further away in time, the decay function uh, increases, and the shorter the, 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 the time, the, the, the smaller the decay function. Uh, so uh, for the other decay function, it's actually decay function for the chordal value, for, so the harmony, we have a, a decay function for time and a decay function for harmony. And basically the, the, the closer the, the chords, the shorter, the smaller the decay function. And the further the chords, the further the, the, the bigger the decay function. So algorithm one effectively generates uh, a, a transformation matrix, which is basically a distance matrix. And algorithm two from that distance matrix actually generates uh, a random walk uh, based on the data that was learned in the di distance matrix. So, so here is what I'm talking about. We have an input query. So we start with uh, a triad, for example. Doesn't need to have to, it doesn't have to be a, a triad, but here we have a triad. Uh, we select the, the the fingerprint in the distance matrix. So basically, each each line of the finger uh, the, 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 the the distance matrix is equivalent to a chord. So for example, line one is is C, line two is uh, C sharp, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And those fingerprints, we choose the input query uh, the the fingerprint that is closest to input query, and from there we have a bunch of nearest neighbors in the distance matrix. Um, basically, we choose the distance matrix, uh, the, the fingerprint which is closest, which does not have a, a, a row that is equal to one completely. Uh, that means that the distance matrix actually has data for, for that particular fingerprint. And uh, in the 
in the in the distance matrix we have a bunch of k nearest neighbors here we have three nearest neighbors and we choose the one in red and then we go on uh, and when if we do a random walk we just go on like that we take the the, the chord that was chosen we choose some some valid chord and we we continue uh, we we generatively continue to choose notes so here are examples uh, of such random walks on near Romanian learned spaces so here's an example from Schoenberg <laughs> So actually, this example, uh, Schoenberg as Klavierstück, is, is obviously atonal. So the the generated, <laughs> the generated uh, music is actually atonal as well, and follows pretty well the genre of Schoenberg's Klavierstück. Uh, here for for Rachmaninoff's second concerto, piano concerto, movement two, uh, it didn't work out as well. If we consider that something that works well is actually preserving the characteristic of the the learned. Uh, piece actually generates something completely uh, contemporary and atonal. Uh, it's probably because Rachmaninoff's piece is very uh, neo Romanian, very chromatic. Uh, uh, the succession, the succession of, of notes is very important in Rachmaninoff's play uh, piece. So. <laughs> So at the end there, you could hear uh, some of the arpeggios of that second uh, piano concerto. Uh, I know what piece it comes from, so I, I actually hear it. Uh, here is actually another tonal piece that actually works pretty well, I think. Uh, it's very tonal. It's not as um, chromatic as Rachmaninoff's piece. It's very tonal, so, so, so properties of the pieces seem to have been preserved pretty well. Uh, so here it is. So here were here were the three examples. Uh, so let's conclude. Uh, this technique eff effectively represents a MIDI file in a neo-Romanian space equipped with a distance. Uh, this representation, which can be a transformation matrix, uh, like what we showed, I showed you, or a geometric embedding of the transformation matrix in, in Euclidean space, for example. Uh, this representation can effectively be used in deep learning techniques because it does not have the irregularities of a MIDI file. So one of the problems when you're using deep learning with MIDI is that uh, MIDI is very irregular. So deep learning requires a very fixed uh, length input. Uh, so we're going to talk more about this in a paper submitted for review, uh, which was recently submitted for review. Uh, so concatenative and synthesis, uh, synthesis techniques and AI techniques can produce uh, what, what we call here a deconstructivist aesthetics. So more, more on deconstructivist aesthetics in music in a paper we recently submitted. So this term is actually very popular in architecture and philosophy, but, but has not stuck in music. So, so we feel that there's uh, something very deconstructivist in the techniques that we, we were introducing. And you can hear it in examples that I gave. Uh, and finally, uh, there's something we, we term uh, reconstruction paradoxes, which occur in, in that e deconstructivist aesthetics uh, when using concatenative synthesis and AI techniques. Uh, basically, the reconstituted whole does not always preserve the properties of the whole. So we're going to talk more about reconstruction paradoxes in a paper which was recently submitted for review. So thank you for your attention, uh, and I'll take questions. Thank you.